So I built a face computer interface. This is Cheeky Keys. You can use it to control your computer just by making faces at it. I'm not using my hands here at all. I'm going to put Cheeky Keys to the test by trying to apply to with my face and seeing if I can pass a coding interview without ever touching my keyboard. But to explain what on earth is going on here, we need to take a few steps back to how I learned Morse code in an afternoon, why too much blinking can make you nauseous, and fatherhood. I recently became a dad, which comes with certain constraints. I wanted a way to use my laptop, even with both arms wrapped around a sleeping baby for hours at a time. Hello. Dictation software that turns speech into text would probably be the fastest option. But I need something. The most common hands-free solution is an eye-tracking mouse with an on-screen keyboard. This is a good setup if you can only move your eyes, but it doesn't really work at an angle or in low light, and sometimes it requires expensive hardware. Besides, this setup might be a lifesaver for some people, but you can't really use it to write code. I couldn't find a single hands-free tool that gives full keyboard access, and I use a lot of shortcuts. So I decided to build Cheeky Keys. The original plan was to use Morse code to blink out the alphabet, and other facial gestures to reach the rest of the keyboard. As an initial proof of concept, I made a program that just prints the letter X every time I blink. I used a computer vision library called OpenCV and a toolkit called DLib for face tracking. For controlling the keyboard, the whole code was... Yeah, that, that's it. I love Python. To turn those blinks into the rest of the alphabet and digits and punctuation, I needed to learn Morse code, where each letter is translated into a series of short dots and long dashes. A is dit da, B is da dit dit dit, and so on. This system was originally used in radio communication, but it's hugely versatile because it only relies on a single on-off signal and time. You can communicate in Morse code using light, sound, or even blinks. I thought learning Morse would take a long time, but it honestly took about 15 minutes with the right strategy. The secret is to come up with a short, memorable phrase to match each symbol, and then memorize that mnemonic. For instance, C could be Coca-Cola. P is a poopy smell. Did I mention I'm a new dad? I'll put my full chart up here, or you can find it linked below if you want to try it out yourself. After blinking out the Morse alphabet a few times, I had to take a break. It turns out that long blinks are kind of disorienting. We blink around 15 times every minute and never even notice. You are now extremely aware of your own blinking. But anything that lasts longer than about a third of a second is an interruption to your brain. Not great when you're trying to type. So I switched to another simple movement that I can do over and over again. Besides Morris Mouth, I came up with simple gestures for shift, command, Control, escape, zoom in, zoom out, and some handy helpers like repeat. All of these work by calculating the relative distance of specific points on my face from each other, then setting thresholds to trigger each gesture. Instead of pausing between letters, I also added in mouth scrunches. It's a little slower, but a much more accurate signal. Well, somewhat more accurate. It doesn't know where my chin is. I don't know where my chin is. I might have to shave. Apparently, beards and glasses are a common problem in facial recognition. But even after a trim, Dlib's model still wasn't that accurate. The dataset I used was trained on thousands of neutral faces, so it makes lots of reasonable assumptions like eyebrows belonging at the same distance above each eye. Fortunately, Google recently released a machine learning system called MediaPipe that offers a lot more detail. Whoa. It's so good. That was just from running their sample Python code. This is literally all it took to get up and running. MediaPipe uses nearly 500 facial landmarks projected back into 3D space. Moisturize me, moisturize me. It's designed mainly for use with augmented reality, like you've probably seen in Snapchat filters. It even has tools for hand tracking and full body poses, which gives me all sorts of ideas for future projects. I tried to stick with the features that MediaPipe was best at picking out, so nose flares and ear wiggles are a no-go, but it's great at following duck face. You can now scroll up and scroll down, and with the duck face modifier, you can also arrow left and arrow right. Backspace is just duck face with a double blink. I haven't really practiced with cheeky keys beyond what was needed for testing, but I think I'm ready for my interview. Okay, well, thanks again for the time. We have about 30 minutes for this interview, and we'll have a couple of coding questions for you. You can see this 
first one here. I can walk you through it. I mentioned I'm a pretty slow typer. That's that's okay. Uh, sure. Feel free to talk me through your logic as well as you go through it. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, do you want to chop me through it or test your code first? I can't hit the run button. You cannot hit the run button? Is there a keyboard shortcut? Hey. Okay, well, it did work. I'm curious if you thought about maybe having your was more descriptive. Yeah, yeah, it does work. Um, and you tested it too. But we could move on to the next question if you feel ready. No, I, I think that's enough for today. Thank you for the opportunity. So I didn't get the job, but I did complete the first problem. I think with more practice, I could get a lot faster too. The Cheeky Keys code is linked below. It's designed for this but it should be straightforward to make your own adjustments for your own face. If you want to see more crazy projects like this, please subscribe. And I might just keep using some of these shortcuts, even when my hands are free. It makes browsing the web a much more interactive experience.